Should I get a divorce? Me? No. Should you? I don't know. Stick around. Let's figure it out. It's been a few years and we've shed a few tears, lost a lot of time and friends. We said our love is meant forever, so we're holding out together as though our lives will never end. Together we are one and we burn brighter than the sun. Until our bodies cross fade It's you, babe, and me, babe Our hearts bleed but don't break <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And the crowd went wild! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun having a musician in the house Well, hi y'all, my name's Jess And I'm Reed <laughs> I'm the husband. Uh, are you sure? Is there something I don't know? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I just didn't know why you'd have to well, explain that. Well, I said that. the husband. Oh, I'm the ex-fiance. It's because I snatched you. <laughs> <laughs> so the question of today's show is... Should I get a divorce? That's a really and good question. You know what? I have heard this uh, hundreds of times over the years. People come to me, just want to talk. I don't know what I should do. Should right. I get a divorce? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And it is a really, really big question. And honestly, I feel really honored that people have come to me to ask these types of questions. It's a really, really good question. Right. And it's been asked by us from so many people Right. Close friends, and we've had really intimate experiences. And even complete with strangers. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as I was speaking and traveling and stuff, yeah. like complete strangers who would know of me, like, come and be like, ah, what should I do? I do know that we may be able to shortcut a whole lot of it for you because we've been married almost 16 years and we have five kids, but we also have had a lot of speed bumps in our life, so to say. Mm -hmm. And so our marriage has really been put to the test over and over and over again. And because of that, we've had to look these questions square in the face so many times. Like, is he the one? And is he still the one? And is he still the one? <laughs> and what about today? <laughs> like those, because but commitment. But I'm still the one. <laughs> single day it's not like just because there's a ring it's suddenly like you're there forever in your soulmates like it takes it takes work but there's this huge misconception in society that it has to be hard right and you know what it's not hard in fact it's easy and it's fun and it can be playful and exciting and awesome and completely awesome and amazing <laughs> and awesome <laughs> so i guess the the biggest thing that people normally think when they're like, should I quit my relationship? Should it just be over? Should I even think about it? I think like the first thing we start thinking about is what could it be like if we had a different life? For me, in my experience, it was that I just wanted the pain to stop. I just wanted the anger and frustration, the irritation, all the problems that I had with you, mm -hmm. I wanted them to all stop. Yeah. And that puts so many blocks, it, just the mindset of that puts so many barriers between e each other. Yeah. That you can't ever make it work when you're thinking like that. Right. And you really have to do a jump start. You have to restart everything and figure out why on earth you were in this relationship to start with? Right. Yeah. What What? What was the point? Yeah. How the hell did you end up here? How did that ring get on the finger? How, right. Yeah, why did we decide to move in together? And why did we decide to commit? There were reasons. What? Yeah. And, and I loved your spontaneity, your musical qualities, that you could always make me laugh and smile and sing and dance. Yeah, but yet, when I was mad at you, I hated that you made me laugh and smile and sing and dance. Right? <laughs> and so, so many times that the reasons we fell in love become the reasons that we can't stand that person. And it's because we're different. Yeah. And Rocky, you know Rocky. Mm -hmm. um, give me some Rocky. Uh, yo, Adrian. <laughs> you know. 
<laughs> Yo, <Right>. Paulie. <laughs> you know. And so yeah. Rocky said about Adrian, I got gaps and she got gaps and together, together we, we fill the, the gaps. gaps. <laughs> yeah. right. And that's so true because well, we're radically different. And yeah. I think all people are radically different, but we're also really the same because we're remarkably human. Yes. And we all make mistakes. We all do stupid stuff. Yeah. We all have bad habits. We yeah. all say stupid shit. We all are human. So in light of that, because yes. that's that's the good, that's the pretty, that's a we we got that's married. That's good. That's good because we're human, focusing and remarkably human. That is remarkably good. human. I'm talking about yeah. like when when you and I right. got in this relationship. We're right. like best friends. Like we like human all over each other. We were just like <laughs> we rely on each other so much that there was conflict early on. Well, right. Because we needed each other, right? Well, and we also didn't know how to human together because yeah. you did things your way, I did things my way, mm -hmm. and yeah, then there's all these weird habits and things that you have to mush together, and yeah. it's hard. You got because, two strong people, right? That don't realize that they need to agree right and that's where the um, conflict comes up and that's where you have to really establish trust mm -hmm. is that how do you trust you know what how when, do you trust jess trust is a decision mm. because when i was really contemplating is divorce for me mm -hmm. is this something that oh, I should step into. Yeah. I had to really put myself in that situation because once the pain is gone, mm -hmm. the pain, the person who is irritating you, once that that pain is gone, all of the good things that they did for you in your life are also gone. And so if we understand that every single person has hangups, Every single person is not perfect. It doesn't matter whether they're financially successful, whether they're totally happy and have nothing. It doesn't matter whether they're in a perfect health or poor health. Like yes. every single person has issues, has problems. They have funny things that you're not going to like, and yeah. they're not going to feel funny. That leads me to how, <laughs> but, oh, how, do, you, yeah. how do you build trust? Wait, well, that's like what I was bringing. It's it. about... It is about deciding to trust. So it's your Because decision. I have already, so let's say okay. we've been married a year. Yeah. Or two years or five years. And if I were to imagine myself without the pain and without you in my life. Yeah. You know, now I'm single mothering and I'm providing for my family and I'm doing it and we're co-parenting and all this is happening. Mm -hmm. I still have to go to bed at night with no one. Right. I still have to wake up to no one uh, unless I'm going yeah. to start hiring sex workers or go visit a toy store. Right. Like I still have sexual needs. Right. Like all of these things are still there that aren't, it, it, you're going to have to find it in someone else is what I'm saying. Yeah. So oh, boil it down. <clears throat> find someone or hopefully you're already with the someone whose issues you can tolerate and then remember why you love them and recommit every day because everyone's going to have issues. The grass is not greener on the other side, barring any major abuse, like stick together, work through the issues, mm. get it done because you know what? No one's going to be any different, right? Yeah. You're going to have problems. Right. It's how you work through right. them. So there's amazing perks. Yeah, well, there's amazing perks to being in a relationship. Right. And those are the things... I, I'm just going to tell you my story. Please. I was in Rockport, Texas. It was after a hurricane. And life was really hard. We were living in tents. Um, our, trail, our RV had been destroyed. And I was walking the streets of Rockport. Very small town. Ooh, um, was this the day that we had a really big argument? We had a really big argument. Yeah. And um, it, was, it involved parenting, involved a lot of things. And I... I had no idea why we were arguing to that degree, but there was a lot of things said that really hurt. And so I was like, I was going along and I'm like, for some reason, the right question, it felt like the right question popped into my head was, and that was, why am I even in this relationship? Why? 
And then I remembered why I'm in this relationship. And I was able to think of all of the things. I was able to start counting the things that, um, that I really were dear to my heart. Number one, I remember go, uh, having a job interview where I, I had no idea how to write um, a resume. A resume, right. I don't even know what to call it, apparently. In self employed. <laughs> I did long. it. <laughs> she wrote the resume for me, and it was so impressive that I was able to negotiate the highest paying job within the field of work that I did. Got the job and was just hit the ground running because of the resume she gave me. And it, it was the heart she put in it. She captured my personality and she really captured my skill set. And I didn't know how to do that. And that I, I started thinking about that and then I started Wait, adding all these hold things on. up. You thought of that? When you were rock, walking in Rockport, you thought of that scenario that happened like... Eight, ten years prior? It was eight, prior? ten years prior. <laughs> oh, wow. And, but that that fueled this, like, desire to remember what is actually, what has been good in my relationship. Because at the time, it was terrible, right? Right. Because we were just, like, at total conflict. It's so hard. And I started feeling comfort. Right. I had hope for safety. It didn't feel safe at the moment, but I knew it could be safe again. During that same season, I decided that I would trust. Mm. That I was going to decide to trust you every day. And that I was going to find safety and comfort in you. Because I didn't feel safe. And we had just lost everything in a hurricane. And tents were rough. Mm. And so I, I chose to find safety in you. Yeah. And out of that season, we were able to connect our desires, have deep commitment, have deep trust, really come together. And it, it was so, it was beautiful because every day there's a new commitment, but I had to accept the good with the bad. And then I had to realize, oh crap, Reed puts up with a whole lot of shit from me. Like he really does. And he still loves me. And that means I can probably put up with his shit <laughs> and it's okay to take a break and it's okay to be honest. It's okay. Yeah. It, it, it's not perfect. But if you come to the table saying, I'm willing to trust you, I'm willing to commit, I'm willing to do this and I want to do this, it, it, it will work. It will work. It, it will work. It's it, all about, it's all about the agreement. Right. Absolutely. You, you agree with you, you know what you want. Right. And you make that clear with them. You because, know. Because when it comes yeah. down to it, there were so many other walks that I had where it was all of this pressure of life, um, especially mm -hmm. in our relationship. And I was just like, what am I going to do? And all I could think of was this list of all of the bad things that could happen if I were to lose my relationship. And I think I learned that all the way back from recovery groups um, and some of the counseling I went through. It was this step-by-step -step process of identifying what you could lose and that does work but only for a moment because eventually you're going to have to be able to recognize why you actually and what do you have what, what do, do you, you have, have together right what did you start with Wait, and what can you accomplish if you can just put all the little bullshit aside yeah. and just go you will have because this agreement now absolutely yeah. now we have almost 16 years of trust built up, of understanding each other, of understanding where the other person is coming from. So we can work so much better together because of those experiences. Those hard times taught us how to trust. Yeah. Now, you know what? I want to throw a wild one in here because so many people are just like, well, the sex just isn't there. It's all about sex. Like our culture puts so much emphasis on sex that we forget about the rest of life, like yeah. trust and commitment, because it's not as sexy and because it's not sex. Like sex is a human need. I wanted to see how many times I could put sex in one sentence and I just did it. Wow, that was sexy. <laughs> so what here's else the deal. Like sex, I'm saying? <laughs> here's the deal. Okay. When we had been married about bonus. Bonus? Is this Here a bonus? bonus. Boom, 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 boom. We just primed you for the bonus. Okay. Here it goes. Here's the bonus. When um, we had been married about 10 years, we had um, a series of girls in our house that were not ours that we helped finish growing to adulthood. Um, we were parents <laughs> to big kids. That's right. What, that's... So we had been married about 10 years and yeah. like sex became a real big talk, topic with, you know, older teenage girls. And 
I decided to really do some math because numbers are kind of my jam. And spreadsheets. Uh, oh, right. So what I did was I decided with a 10 year marriage, if someone had sex five days a week, 30 minutes a time, so that's, <laughs> that's pretty darn good. If you're able to have sex 30 minutes a day, five days a week for 10 years, I've never met anyone to do that. We don't do that. That would be epic just because there's ups and downs. Did I mention we have five kids? Um, that person needs like, to have a career in porn. Uh, that, that, right, exactly. They get paid for it. That, over a 10-year period, accounts for less than 3% of your time. If you are so lucky to get sex 30 minutes a day, five days a week, for 10 years straight, and you have a business and a family and all those other things. It's really easy to do when you're young and single. Mm -hmm. Not so much for 10 years straight. If you do that, it's less than 3% of your time. That means the other 97 plus percent, you have to actually like the person. You have to be <laughs> friends. You have to know them. You have to want to hang out. Like, you play games together. Like, do stuff together. You have to be friends. And you know what's really easy? Having sex with your best friend. <laughs> and business partner. Right. It's so much fun. Oh, man, the crazy things that can happen when you're, like, married to your business partner and best friend. It's awesome. So. In conclusion. In conclusion. We, we discovered that the grass is not normally greener on the other side, but right. it could be. Mind you, it could be. Like, you may not be in a relationship you situation, want to be in. Yes. Right? Or if it's just toxic. Or if it's and toxic, it, like, abusive. Like, you right. need to identify those things, but that's for you to identify. Right. You can't ask your partner to figure those things out. You have to identify if that relationship is worth it to you and do some soul searching. And that is some of the hardest thing. Right. The hardest things you'll ever face. So if but your complaints are it's things like not enough time, not enough attention, mm -hmm. not enough money, not enough um, cuddles, not enough sex. If those are the issues, those can easily be resolved and it can be fun and it can be enjoyable. Yes. But you got to yes. go in. It's like shit yeah. or get off the pot. Yeah. Don't, don't half ass marriage because you're going to lose. Yeah. It's that simple. And if you have kids, your kids are going to lose. It's yeah. just easier. It, it, there's no other way around it. And it doesn't matter what your family looks like. I don't, it doesn't yeah. matter if it's two women, two men, five people. It doesn't matter as long as it's right for you. Y'all are going to have to figure this out. Right. <laughs> like consent is everything. But yeah. commitment and trust, the perks are off the charts compared Incredible. to the negatives. You don't have to be committed. Right. But you better not be in a relationship and not be right, committed. Right, because everything will crumble around you. And that's actually the topic of a whole nother video. So yes. stick around. Stick around. <laughs> so that was a great conclusion. So Anything we've taught else? you how to start over. We've taught you how to... Um, we have. We've taught them. No. We've expressed I don't even know what... <laughs> I, I just talked. Shoot from the hip. Speak from the heart. Right? So I hope, I hope what this has done for you is just entirely blow your mind about the possibility of who you are and what you can accomplish with your partner or not. I, so I hope you. it just spurs you to make a decision. Mm. Because... So many times in our society, our decision-making muscles are flabby. Yeah. And you just need to make a decision. Yeah, don't be flabby. And most of the time, it's piddly bullshit that you're fighting over. Yeah. And really, life is bigger than that. And yeah. trust and commitment and comfort and love and safety are more important than piddly bullshit. Yes. So have a great day. With that conclusion, <laughs> thank you all. Have a fantastic day. See you next time.